Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson we're going to have another pretty short lesson, and that's because a lot of this is review. We just want to solidify in your minds how the units for the derivative work and how to explain what the derivative is doing in context. So there'll be a couple little things that are new, but for the most part this, we've already done this this year. So let's start off by just remembering what's the slope between two points. So we could describe this as the change in y divided by the change in x, so it's just some quotient where the y's on top divided by the x's, or a little bit more important way of thinking about it for the context of problems, of word problems, would be that we think of the change in dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. So what is the dependent and independent variable? Well, function notation is actually really easy to tell which one's the dependent and the independent because whatever gets plugged into the function, that is the independent. So when you have f of x, the derivative of f of x is represented by the unit for f divided by the unit for x. Now this is the same thing as the y values divided by the x values. This is slope. The derivative is just slope at a very specific point. So if you had something like, uh, let me think about this, if I had like h of t, like the height respect to time, then you would be saying that if you figured out the derivative, then your units would have to be the units for h and then divided by the units for t, units for t. All right, so it's always this thing here divided by the input value, which in this case would be the x. Another thing that is not really going to be new, but we just, let's make sure that we're clear about this. We've been doing this for a little while, but now you're going to formally write it out. And that is that if the derivative is greater than zero, so we're talking about that if the derivative is positive, if f prime, then f is increasing. So if f prime is positive, f is increasing. If s prime is positive, s is increasing. If w prime is positive, w is increasing. Okay, just so if something's derivative is positive, it goes, it's going up. And if the thing's derivative is negative, it is decreasing. That might seem like very obvious things, because really, what is that? That just means if the slope is going up, it's increasing. If the slope is negative, the thing's going down and it's decreasing. But it's extremely important for a lot of things we're going to be doing, especially when we get into unit five, but it helps us for context of each problem, if something's getting bigger or smaller. Okay, let's try a problem. We have Mr. Sullivan who wants Mr. Bus to hurry up and finish creating his packets in Algebra 2. So we have this P of W thing, where P is how many packets he's completed, and W is measured in weeks. So how do we interpret P of 10 equals 1? We've been doing this for several years in mathematics and high school math, and that is just that 10 is the weeks. So we have after 10 weeks, Mr. Brust has completed one packet. <laughs> Okay, this is supposed to be a joke because that it really does is how long Mr. Brust takes to complete packets. Okay, so then uh, we go into P prime. What is this? This is where we're getting into the calculus stuff. So P prime is always a rate of change. We have a rate of change and we're just trying to interpret within this what is going on. We have on the 39th week, Mr. Brust is making packets at a rate of four packets per week. And I want to underline this thing that says at a rate of, because this is an important phrase when we're trying to interpret uh, what a derivative is. The, when, when you're taking the exam, the AP readers are going to look for that. They want to see P prime when you're, when you're interpreting it, that you're talking about that it represents a rate of change of whatever p was, which in this case p is the packets, and so it's rate of uh, at a rate of four packets per week. Okay, let's do one more of these. This is a really short lesson, and we now have th this one's different because we are given a function that already represents a rate. So the rate at which Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards per year is modeled by b of t. b of t is already a rate of change. Okay, so it's almost like we, this already is the derivative, if you were used to thinking rate of change is a derivative. So interpret b of 3 equals 150. Well, in this case, we have that on the third year, Mr. Kelly is buying cards at a rate of 150 cards per year. Again, I use that phrase, at a rate of, and then it's 150 cards per year. So what happens if we take the derivative of a function that already is a rate of change? If we take its derivative, then now we're saying the rate of change is going to be changing. So this is kind of interesting to look at this. On the fourth year, the rate at which Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards is increasing. So B is the rate. It's increasing at a rate of 10 cards per year per year. 
Why per year per year? Because it was just uh, baseball cards per year. That's B of T. So now when we do a rate of change of that, it's a per year again. Or you could say per year squared if you'd, if you'd prefer to like this per year, if I can spell per year squared, if you wanted to just say cards per year squared. Okay, so now this covers basically everything we're doing for this lesson. You're just trying to take derivatives in context, but be careful about if they're giving you something that's already a rate of change and if you have to interpret what its derivative would mean. Just be careful that you get the correct units and that you're always using this important phrase of at a rate so that you can clarify how you're interpreting this derivative stuff. Okay, rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in our next lesson.